Hello and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 518. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and we got some news for you this week. Uh, let me double check two things first. Yes, news. There we go. So, first up is Hasbro City now open in Mexico. If you happen to find yourself at the Paiso Inter, uh, Interlomas Shopping Center in Mexico City, Hasbro has officially opened up its own family entertainment center. Inside, you will find rides, games, food, and price team after price team after all of their most well-known brands. For from My Little Pony to ha- mm, from My Little Pony to uh, Monopoly. Wow, that's a tongue twister. For cartoon horses specific things, they have a ride called Zippy's Royal Flight along with merch and displays of horse. Get full gallery below. So we get the Mr. Potato Head stage show. Um, we see that they have popcorn buckets and whatnot. Uh, game centers. Uh, they have Nerf Arc. Aid, uh, and also bus a move frenzy okay uh, i'm this i'm guessing this is the uh royal right thing some garden and popcorn buckets and whatnot All right so there's the hasbro city mr potato head bucket the transformers bucket and also the pony bucket <coughs> press release uh, on June 23rd, 2023, Hasbro City, the much-anticipated Hasbro Team Family Entertainment Center, has officially opened its gates to guests in Paseo Eo, Inter Lomas Shopping Center in the state of Mexico. A fan of Hasbro, a toy and game company, and its iconic brand will now be able to experience action-packed fun and unique Sorry. Uh, immersive experience in the newly created entertainment destination. Hasbro City extensive entertainment offering includes rides such as Monopoly the Ride, uh, a suspended roller coaster which carries the rail on top, and where the passenger can control the speed. Power Rangers Battle state-of-the-art bumper car, track with 360-degree turn, Zip's Royal Flight, among many others. And in addition to exciting rides, the new entertainment center also offers character shows, interactive and virtual attractions, active play space, fun, skills, game, and delicious food and beverages, off- beverages offerings, as well as the first Hasbro team store in the region. To know the day and hours of operation for Hasbro City, as well as the pricing and ticket information, visit HasbroCity.com, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah. Um, uh, let's read this one. Hasbro City is a fun, uh, sorry, uh, it's a family team entertainment center with unique offerings of attractions, skill, games, Character shows, meet and greets, and food and beverages experience for the whole family based on Hasbro iconic brands such as Monopoly, Potato Head, My Little Pony, Power Rangers, Thorn Car, Transformers, and many more. <clears throat> so, what we have here is just your generic theme park, uh, in mall theme park, like those, uh, oof. hmm. I'm I'm processing this in my head because over here in Malaysia, in mall theme parks are not many. I, I've been I've seen a few, like two maybe here, but they don't have anything to the degree of uh Hasbro or anything like that. Like uh the one I went to was Somewhere and the let's see if I can find their so yeah um place is 
called Times Square Theme Park. And they have this uh, uh here we go. Kind of alien cat mascot thingy. And you know, honestly it's the same concept as what uh, Hasbro City is doing, but instead of well known IPs, it's just self-made mascot that you don't really have to pay a third party for uh for for this one hasbro city i'm guessing hasbro is bringing down their own thing and trying to capitalize on this but the idea is fun uh it's really cool and hasbro city i i, I do wonder if this is the first and only location that they have because it'll be very strange if it was their only right like don't they have it in the states uh no that i'm guessing in spanish yes took me a while to process things uh yeah it's in spanish so that means uh they don't have it in the state i, I guess small theme parks are not that popular i guess but I did remember a few articles, videos that uh, were, how do I put it? I, I did remember a few where Hasbro has their own in the mall, but I, I think that they rebranded it. Like, it, it was kind of a documentary way back when I saw on YouTube and whatnot, but it was, it was back in the days. I, I, I don't remember, but if that's true, um, this Hasbro City one, I'm just guessing that they're testing out the waters, seeing how it do in Mexico, if it's a success or not, depending on what their success rate is. And with that, they'll slowly venture through other countries or other states. If it's popular in uh, Mexico City, they'll probably try and branch out to maybe... Texas, that's close to Mexico, right? So, I mean, they'll probably try and branch out to see how it works. Uh, probably China is a good one because China seems to be pretty popular with uh, as, uh, with the ponies and Hasbro stuff. So, that's a location that can pop up in. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But the idea of Hasbro having its own in mall amusement center or whatever it's called amusement park yes uh it's pretty interesting you need to buy a ticket and i'm not 100 percent sure if the rides are free or you need to pay for the ride so basically you <laughs> so if that does happen it's double dipping and that's that's dirty let's move on uh my little pony tsunami's two pack with rainbow dash and pinkie pie san diego comic con exclusive <laughs> Apparently, San Diego Comic Con merchandise involves Pony Isn't Over! Yay! A, com a company called USCC Distributing will be releasing a pair of keychains for $20, starring both Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie at the convention this July under the brand name Tsunami. Uh, expect to be able to pick them up at booth 5613 throughout the con from the 19th to the 23rd. So I've checked out the tsunamis and they're kind of popular if you're into the keychain things. Uh, let me show you guys what I found. And there, there's something like this. They're kind of blind bag random keychains you got no idea what you'll get and you'll get something like um this one i'm guessing fish so they'll put in like a keychain and you'll get some kind of uh cute fishy animals and then you'll get something like this and so on uh the idea is pretty cool and it looks cute if you're into the whole cute keychain thing um so pony was something like this so you you'll get oh yeah it's 
uh, a sort of teacher in My Little Pony. So yeah, that's cool. So you'll get something like this, and if you're a fan of ponies, I guess you'll probably try and get it. This looks cool. And this one, or this two, they don't look similar to the one I just showed you, but this one, uh, ooh, I didn't notice this. Limited edition, one of 500. So, yeah, that's even going to be more hectic. Comic -Con, San Diego Comic Con International Exclusive. So, there's numberings to this. The $20, how do I put it? This is one of those cases and scenarios where if you say that it's limited edition and don't really put a, what you might call this, amount on it, yeah, you can just say limited edition, limited run, whatever it is, blah, blah, blah. But now you put a number on it, then people will go for, oh, wow, there's only 500 of this in the entire world. I must get them because they're limited to 500. And obviously, the single digit numbers are going to be a bit expensive on the, after, on the resale market. Uh, numbers like uh, 69, 100, all this stuff, num all those meme numbers are going to be bonkers. 42 probably, I don't know. But yeah, th this is going to be... I, I can see the specul mar speculator market going gaga for this if there is a, if there's still a market for this. Because here's the thing. This is G4. He, no matter how popular G4 is, the marketing push for G4 is not there anymore. And especially with this specific kind of item, in all honesty, you buy it for $20, the best you can sell it is at most times two or probably you'll get, what, $100 for them, depending on the numbers. Like, if you get, let's just say, 69, lol, nice, whatever, uh, probably you can push it to 120. I I'm just guessing. You get $100 back for your investment, I think. But, in all honesty, like, these are... Like, w once that I know this is limited, I won't be open. I won't be cracking this open, man. Like, I'll, I'll be keeping them in box. Anyway, let's move on to the next news. <clears throat> IDW cover artist Nathan. Uh, sorry, Natalie. Natalie. Highness. Highness. Reveal hidden Sonic the Hedgehog in her comic cover. Yay! Um, Lightning Star 1389. Natalie. Highness, who illustrated covers for IDW's. My Little Pony and Sonic the Hedgehog series has revealed a textless version of her cover for My Little Pony, Camp Bigfoot issue number 3. The below for full image. Notably, she also says that she snuck a Sonic reference into the cover. Hmm. And here it is. Now that part is shown, I can emphasize the Sonic Pony here. So, yeah. You, you you can clearly tell. That's really awesome. Um. So this is the cover. For cover B, Cat Bigfoot issue three, and I wonder if this is the okay. So this is the panoramic version, issue three. Ah oh, man, now I'm now I'm thinking to myself: Is this a three cover thing? Because if it is. Hmm, I guess it is. So basically, you have three covers, and combining them will make one panoramic view. That's awesome. So let's let's take a look here at how the Sonic Pony look. Hmm, you know this would be a really good wallpaper. Okay, so we see. Uh, I haven't read the comic yet, so I got no idea. But we see some kind of, uh, sorry, we we see the main cast for G five in the background, 
uh, doing stuff or discovering things. Uh, we see Hitch panicking. Uh, we also see some shadow ponies in the background. All right, cool. Uh, we see um i forgot your name i'm sorry being in the spotlight singing and dancing that that's her thing and we also see zip there uh tracking down or being uh, or investigating what's going on uh, we see half eaten donuts and so on and we see right here in the front the sonic pony roasting marshmallows and the the look okay he he looks similar to Sonic with the mane and whatnot, but what really sells it is the color theme because you have his hooves in the G five style where his nails are red and he has white fluff and covered with blue fur on top, so that's basically like how Sonic does his shoes and on the separate panel here, we see that he has uh, wingtips similar in that fashion too, where he has blue and white and red tips. So yeah, that that's that's pretty cool. I, I do I do love this uh this rendition, this this art, this kind of Easter egg thing. This is really fun and cool. And with that. Uh, that's the news for this week. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And next topic is what have I been doing for my week? And uh, let's see. I have been doing the same thing. Um, playing D&Ds, but not magic. Because uh, this week there was a public holiday. And friends and families wanted to do stuff. So had to do stuff. No magic for me. Kind of bumming it, bumming me down. But I did manage to play two sessions of D and D, and it was not. That video will be up soonish. Um, the the experience of playing two games back to back was pretty fun, and it was, and it was with the same GM and with the same party members, same campaign basically. And I I have to say it was fun. I I wish we could do this again, but. Um, I have a strong feeling that this was a one-off because last week we didn't have a session because of scheduling. So the GM thought that, hey, uh, why don't we uh, stack two of them together one, one Friday, one Saturday, so we can do it that way, so we can have two sessions back-to-back. -back. And in all honesty, I love doing that. Like, I wish I could do more of that. But schedule, hmm. I don't know, I mean, the scheduling seems to be, like, it worked for this week. I got no idea how future sessions are going to work. So we will shall see. But overall, um, yeah, fun times. So you're probably wondering, wait, no movie this week or last week? No, um, didn't manage to go watch any movies. I, I know there's a few movies that came out, uh, indie, which I heard was, <sighs> mm. uh, questionable in quality and elementals is something that me and my friend want to watch but they didn't have the time and from what I'm seeing right now it's kind of not the best so yeah um, we, we'll probably wait and see I mean what are the movies that are out right now because uh, besides the Ladybug movie that's going to come out on Netflix, I don't know. Oh, uh, Mission Impossible, that's that. Uh, let's see what else. What are you? Is that a melee movie? Huh? Yeah, so um, honestly speaking, probably... um, Ooh, there's the Resident Evil movie? Oh, that's today. I think that's the fan screening because uh, I'm seeing that it only shows for three days. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. That is something to... Yeah, probably I'll... Hmm, okay. I'll probably watch it tomorrow on my own. Okay, cool. Uh, so, something to probably go watch tomorrow. Mm -hmm. 
probably. So anyway, um, let's wrap things up. Let's wrap things up. So you guys, if, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions to the show, you can contact us at nbsugmail.com. Uh, you can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at NBS Show. And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Uh, also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyWithLife.com. Links are in the show notes. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash NBS Show. With every support, you get a week's early access to re- review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank you, Jacob, Lucky Knight, and also myself, Like, Thank you so much, guys. You are great, and you have been really kind to me. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo, and I'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the BS Show. See ya.